today in Jesus name. Amen, amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. One thing before I get into the word today, I want to just mention real quick. We are having two services Easter, which means we're going to have double the people. If you're a part of this church, we need you to help. And here's what you need to do. We're, we're, we're calling it worship one, serve one. Worship one, serve one. Not worship hunt one, go home. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Worship one, serve one. There are a lot of places that we need help. We're going to have a lot of guests here, and we're going to need to to. Be honest with you, put forth our best foot. We want to make sure we have everything covered. So for one day, Jesus sacrificed for you. Surely one day you could sacrifice and serve. In, the, in, in front of you, on the seat in front of you, you see those QR codes? How many of you know what a QR code is? Now, David, I'll help you with that later. But No, he knows. Take your phone out, click not now, (laughs) before you leave, click on that, and it will show you everything you need to do to serve. We need you to serve. Amen. Well, I'm going to have guests. Well, good. We need you to serve. That's my point. So I believe that God's going to, I would give you my Easter Sunday message that that taught me that lesson, but I really don't have time this morning. But, but because I learned a valuable lesson when I was a young Christian about serving, uh, and it was on Easter Sunday. Well, I'm going to just tell you anyway. <laughs> Y'all not in a hurry today, are you? <clears throat> My pastor, John Osteen, Joel's dad, when we were at Lakewood, um, wanted to open a kitchen and serve people meals after church on Sunday. And he knew I'd been in the restaurant business before I got saved, so he asked me to do it. I did not want to do it because I had, listen, I had to miss church to do it. 
Yeah, he didn't have what you've got now, remote, you know, and live stream and all that. I had a little box speaker up in the corner that I could hear the message while I was getting ready to feed everybody. My attitude stunk. I didn't want to do it. I, didn't, I only did it because my pastor asked me to do it, but I didn't like it. And so Easter Sunday, we knew we were going to have a crowd. And so, you know, it was going to be a, a long day. Get, I had to be there early and get all the food ready. And I mean, it was, it was a big to-do. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to fast today. You know, it'd be nice to fast on an off day, you know. But Easter, you know. I, but I said, yes, sir, I will. So I was fasting that day. And, and so... Uh, you know, I've still got a bad attitude every time, uh, you know, Brother Osteen would say, well, Sam's over there fixing us uh, a great meal for after the service. What are we having today? Now, I couldn't answer him. He was just being a smart aleck. <laughs> He's in heaven now, so he'll forgive me. But, but I would stick out my tongue at that box. <laughs> that Sunday morning, you know, I, my attitude was just as bad as always. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm, um, I'm there, and so, you know, I was listening while I was working, and the message is a good message, good Easter resurrection message. And so uh, after church, you know, everybody came over there, and there's Sunday best, and, man, it was a, I mean, we had people everywhere. And so I had to jump in there and help serve food, and, and so we were doing it, you know, cafeteria style, so I'm putting the, the food on the, on the trays and passing it down, and, and I'm putting the food on the tray, and I looked up. And when I looked up, I saw God's people. I mean, I saw, I saw God's people not just as faces. I saw them as God's people. I mean, God opened my eyes to what he saw. I mean, it was, and, and I mean, I realized I am serving God's people. What an honor to be able to serve God's people. And I just started crying. I was crying in the mashed potatoes, <laughs> crying in the turkey, crying. It, I mean, I, I, mean I, I, I just started weeping because I realized, listen to me, what a privilege it is to serve the body of Christ. I never, listen, I want to tell you something. It, I, I've never been the same since as far as understanding the responsibility of service. It's hard sometimes for a pastor to get, a, get that across to, to, to you. But, but I want to tell you something. It is magnificent to be able to serve in the eyes of God. It's magnificent. It's amazing. Well, I want to be in church. Well, see, you can be. Serve one. Worship one. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, now I'm going to really make you mad because my message today is one of those. But <laughs> Well, not really, but sort of. I want to talk to you today about what do you identify as. I got to tell you, I, I am stirred up in my spirit about how aggressive the world is becoming about you accepting identities that have nothing to do with you as a child of God. And not only that, but exposing your children and yourself to those identities. Now, you know, a lot of it we think about, you know, and I'm going to deal with this a little bit today. We think about, you know, identifying, you know, as gender neutral and bisexual and all these other terms, homosexual or LBGQT, whatever the rest of those letters are, I, I, you know, and that we identify, you know, uh, that people identify that way. We don't want to hurt their feelings. Listen to me. You better be careful how, what your perspective is. We walk in love toward every person. But I want to tell you something. The more you allow that image and that identity to be a part of your life, the more you're opening yourself up, listen to me, to, to danger in your life. You've got to understand and realize, listen to me, 
you've got to understand something. God did not create man and woman to be that way. And, and we've got to understand that and know that. And we cannot back off from that. It's not our job to argue with somebody about it, but it is our job to what we are exposed to. And you know, I know people get upset about that. We have people in our church that probably like to worship here, but, but they, don't, they want to live their own lifestyle. But I'm going to tell you something. That lifestyle won't get you to heaven. And I'd rather tell you that and you'd be mad at me. Our campus in Lake Charles, I, I've said a few things over the, you know, over the last few years there. And there's a guy in the church and he's married to another man. And, and, he, and, and if, if he finds out I'm preaching, he won't come. So if he's so solid in what he believes and what he identifies in, why does it bother him? Why does it bother him that I would say something? Because it's, it's not right, and, and you get convicted. Okay? And you say, well, that's the way they were born. No, they weren't. I'm going to answer that question today. Okay? So listen to me. I, and I'm not, I'm not just, listen, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I, this is not just about uh, 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 personal identification, you know, gay and, and all these other things, you know, forms, you know, and... and um, I, I, there's a thing in the newspaper this morning. I read it while I was getting eating breakfast about this lady who's binary. I don't even know what that means. But you can't call her Miss or Miss, you know, she wants to go by MX. Well, you can identify however you want to, but I, it's not my responsibility to identify you that way. Not that I'm going to be aggressive toward you, but, but listen, it goes deeper than that, okay? Because if that image is presented and you allow it in your life, it will begin to cause you to have a different identification, and that's dangerous. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's dangerous. What do you allow in your life that could cause you to identify with the world and Satan? You know, you could, now, now you, people are going to get mad at me, I know. And if you'll just listen to the whole message, maybe you, you, you'll love me at the end. But, but listen, your identity politics, I want to tell you something. Listen to me. It can be a trap. I believe black lives matters. Okay, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But if all you're doing is identifying with your race, you're in trouble. Because our identification is in Christ. And there is no black, there is no white. And the other side of that is, it doesn't matter where, where you fall in that spectrum from black to white, you better know that your identification is in Christ. And here's the second part of that. And you better behave like it. Okay, you better behave that way. Somehow we've gotten the idea we don't have to, we can do what we want. No, you can't. All of all that came for these babies today, I'm really a nice guy. I'm a sweet guy. This, this, but this is something that I cannot let go of. It just keeps, it just keeps, it's been gnawing at me. And I woke up at 3.30 in the morning a couple of nights ago and could not get this off of my heart that I've got to let you hear what the Spirit of God saying and what the Word of God says. We're an identifying culture. We want to identify with, with different things. But listen to me. We've got to understand something. We've got to understand how that, that identification process works because it's dangerous if you're, not, um, if you're not understanding it properly because the world and the enemy, who is the devil or trying to get us to accept abnormal identity. And when it, you do, it can open the door for temptation in the lives of those who are susceptible to be deceived, especially children. Your children are not old enough to make decisions. You have to tell them right for wrong. And not only that, you have to protect them from being exposed Because it will sow seeds into their lives. Don't kid yourself. 
I just want to tell you, sexually speaking, not, not, not from a gay perspective, but just from a sexual perspective, I'll never forget at 10 years old, Cecil Mac Reynolds ruined my life. I had to fight that sexuality and that problem, not homosexuality, but just sexual promiscuity from 10 years old because of an image that I saw. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. Don't you kid yourself into thinking, well, the kids will get over it, they'll get past it. No, you better pay attention to what your kids are doing. And it's not just your kids, it's you. Pornography is not a part of the life of a believer. Well, I'm having trouble with that. We have a group called Overcomers. They will help you with that. You, you don't have to deal with that, okay? Now listen to me, okay? Because the world wants you to kind of make these statements that I'm about to say and things I'm about to say unpopular or, or they're, they're uh, not of the mainstream. They're not in the mainstream. They're the Bible. It's the only stream you can live by. Okay, listen to this. 1 John 4, 3 says this. The Passion Translation says, talking about the Antichrist, it says, everyone who does not acknowledge that Jesus is from God is the, has the spirit of Antichrist. Now listen to this. Which you heard was coming and is already active in the world. What you're seeing is a spirit that is actively trying to change our world and especially our nation right now. You got to hear what I'm saying. Well, it's going to get me fired from my job. Well, you choose. Second John 7 says this. It's important. Listen to this. Numerous deceivers have surfed. Well, I don't want to read that out of the New King James. I mean, out of that. No, I want to read it out of the New King James. Pull it back up. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus as coming in the flesh. Now, listen to this. This is a deceiver and, now listen to this, Antichrist. That means against Jesus. Okay, so when you see all this stuff, you just need to mark it. That's against Jesus. That's against Jesus. You say, well, but God loves everybody. God's love is through Jesus. I'm going to deal with this next week, okay? 1 John chapter 3, verse 16 is pretty clear, okay? <clears throat> all right, so listen to me. Man was created to identify with God and be in his image. You've got to understand, this goes, this goes way back. This is building up to the Antichrist. This is building up to, the, to what the scenario of the end is all about. But that doesn't mean you have to be a part of it. Amen. Amen. Listen to what it says in Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. You ready? God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Now listen to this. Over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over all the creeping things that creep on the earth. Now listen, so God created man, listen to what it says, in his own image. In the image of God, he created male and female, he created them. That's it. Anything other than that is not of God and is not in his image. It is not identifying with God. I don't care how much they tell you they love God. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Well, that's just a weakness in their life. No, it is a choice. And it is a spirit that is working. So we're created in the likeness of him. We are created to be like God in that image. Now listen to this. You know, you know the story in creation in, in chapter 3. The devil, Satan, got Adam and Eve 
to imagine a different identity. To be like God. To be their own God. Instead of being submitted to God. But in order to do that, they would have to know something. What? The knowledge of good and evil. And so they were exposed. And they they identified, they chose to identify with what the devil told them rather than what God told them. They were created in the image of God. So if that's the case, my identity should be in line with God's purposes and God's plans, God's word, not my choices. Now, look, it's easy for me to get up here and preach this to you. And I know that people are tempted. And I know people are drawn in certain directions. Or I know people have certain bents in their life. But I want to tell you something. That doesn't make it right that you yield to that. It doesn't make it right. God created us with purpose. God created us with Plans, not perversion from his plan, not our own choices from his plan, but something that belongs to him. Here's a good scripture that'll help you with this over in James chapter one. I'm gonna read beginning in verse 22. It's not on my notes, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, okay? Why? Deceiving yourselves, See, you can be deceived just because you hear the word, you know the word. If you don't do it, you're deceiving yourself. Well, deception leads to self-identification instead of God-identification. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and a doer of a word, listen to this, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. It's interesting, the word natural face there. The Greek text is the face of your birth, how you were born to be. No baby's born as a homosexual or bisexual or any, any, of, any, of, that, any of that. No baby's born a Republican or a Democrat. I don't care how you dress them. (laughs) Now listen to what I'm saying, okay? God set this thing out very simple, very plain. Now I understand that there are struggles in life. I'm not trying to overlook that, but you've got to make up your mind that what's most important is God's creation, how he created me, what God created me to be, what God created me to do, and that's what I'm going to identify with. It's the face of your birth. And and it says here that they look at the face of their birth, and instead of allowing the face of their birth to be what they do, they are deceived and do what they want to do. It's the bottom line, the foundation, the base for life. And just because we are all these centuries and and millennials away from that doesn't change what God did and what he wants and what he expects. Well, I'm getting really uncomfortable. Well, I'm sorry. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says this, But we all, with unveiled face, behold as in a mirror, that's the Word of God, the glory of the Lord. Now this is going to be important, so stick with me. And are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of Lord of the Lord. We are being changed into God's image. We identify with Him and what He wants and His identification for our lives. And that's where we live our lives. Are we there yet? No. 
But I'm going to show you, we're responsible to push toward it. And you've got to understand that and know that. You can't just identify any way you want to identify. And if you're not careful and you're around people who identify with something that is wrong, listen to me, that is an aggressive antichrist spirit that will come after you. It will come after your children. And it's your responsibility to defend it with the word of God. I don't mean at preaching at somebody. I'm talking about your own personal life. Now, this is strong today. I understand. But I want to tell you something. Listen to me. You've got to hear what I'm saying today because we're in a time in our, in our nation especially. It's, in the, it's the whole world. In different, and it, it, you go to another nation, it's something different. It could be a, a nation where it's more of a religious spirit. But it's still the same thing that you have to, you're, just like the Muslim world, if you don't identify with them, they're going to kill you. That's an identification problem. <clears throat> so we were created in the image of God. In fact, it is an exact likeness. It's how we were born to be. And when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you are what? Born again. Adam transgressed. He messed it up for all of us. But Jesus made it right. When you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you become a new creature. Old things pass away. And we pursue God's image for our lives. Now, here's the scary part about this. You've got to hear this, okay? Image comes from imagination. It comes from uh, the act or power of forming a mental image of something that is not necessarily real at the time. The creation of the mind. Let me tell you something. The first thing that the devil wants to do to get you to identify in a wrong area is get you to imagine something. And then when you start imagining it, it becomes an image. That's why pornography is so dangerous. Once you see that, that image is in your mind. Listen, I, I wasn't a very nice person before I got saved. I, I saw some things I had no business seeing. Do you know that now, even now, even after all these years, that stuff will pop up in my brain? Don't look at me so holy. <laughs> but I don't let it stay. Well, I wish I could tell you, moo, I am clean as a whistle. But I'm going to tell you something. That's just not the way the brain works. Amen. And you've got to fight it off. Amen. So you, 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 get over, you get over in that area and you start imagining things in regard to pornography. Next thing you know, it becomes an image. And the next thing you do, you want to start identifying with it. How do you know? Because I have dealt with people for years and years that have been like that. And it's not just men. Aren't you glad you came to church today? <laughs> now see, if you're sitting there all holy and pious because I hadn't touched on your little deal yet. <laughs> Woo, I made it by. You're missing the whole point of what I'm trying to say. Our imaginations should be in line with God's imagery, what He thinks, what He plans, what He made us to be. Because listen to me, wrong mental images in your life will produce wrong identity. And all of a sudden, things that were bad 
Well, that's not so bad. Well, you know, they're nice people or they're a nice person. Or, well, that's not too bad. You know, other people do it. And Hey, I know pastors that booze it up, but that doesn't mean I'm going to do it. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm just trying to get you to understand what you identify with comes from your imagination and from the images and God created one for you. All you've got to do is grab hold of it. Amen. Well, God loves everybody. He does if you're in Jesus. Amen. If you're not in Jesus, you're condemned already. That's what the Bible says. Preview of next Sunday. Listen, Adam and Eve changed the image, image of God in their lives. It literally brought God down to their level. Instead of God being the one saying, this is the best for you, Adam and Eve. This is going to be the perfect plan for your life. They said, no, we want to make our own choices and be more like you instead of you telling us what to do. Amen. Satan got them to imagine vain things. You might want to go study vain things in the Bible. Sometimes it'll help you, okay? How did he do that? Did God really say? Did, did, did God really say that? So now, if you're not careful, listen to me. Every image can be introduced as a potential controlling factor in your life. Now, does that sound like it's hard to live life? Not if you do a few simple things. One of them is, here it is. You ready? It's, it's real. Listen, open your Bible. <laughs> Read your Bible. Second thing is, if you walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh, because the Holy Spirit will strengthen you, correct you, guide you where you need to live your life and how you need to live your life. But I like it. Okay. Think about this. God had to do something over in Genesis chapter 11. Because the children, the, the children of God, the God's creation, it says in verse 6, listen to this. They wanted to build a tower to, the he, to heaven. And the Lord said the people are one and they have one language and this is what they begin to do. Now, now listen to this. I'm, I want you to hear this. Okay, listen to this. It says this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they propose, that word there is imagine, to do will be hit withheld from them. The power of your imagination will drive you toward whatever it is that you're imagining. It's powerful. You are created in the image of God. You have a God factor in you that gives you the capacity to take an image in your brain and make it happen. Good or bad. What do you associate with? What do you expose yourself to? I mean, listen, you can go on TV and expose yourself to more than you have any business exposing yourself to, especially in today's culture. You better pay attention to what movies you go see and what you show your kids see. And I don't, matter, I don't care who it is, what, what group it is. Because let me show you this. This is, this is really kind of what I want, want you to see. Listen to this. Psalm 106. Moses was up on the mountain. While he was up there, his brother let the children of Israel kind of do what they wanted to do. And so they did what they wanted to do. In verse 19, it says they made a calf in Horeb and worshiped what? The molded image. You say, well, that's not that. They just were worshiping a golden calf. Wait a minute. Just forget about what they were worshiping. It was a what? Image. All right, listen to the next verse. Thus, 
They changed, listen, they changed their glory into the image of an ox that eats grass. They changed their image from what God created to what they worshiped, to that image. You don't get it. Listen to me. When you start allowing other things into your life and you start identifying with things that you have no business looking at, no business being a part of, no business allowing in, in, in any way in your, in your purview, listen to what I'm saying. You can literally allow that in and you can change the glory that's in you that God wants in you to the glory of that image and you change from who you're supposed to be to what that image says you are. God has great purpose for your life. He has great things for your life. But if all you're ever doing is allowing yourself to be motivated by other things in your life and identifying with other things in your life, you'll change that glory. And you'll start being like that image, that identity, instead of what God wants you to be. It's dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. Image produces imaginations, and that produces identification. That's your identity. So once you've done that, now listen to me, okay? Once you've done that, now you've changed over to the glory of what you created. Then you have to try to justify that image you created. And that's exactly what's going on in the world today, especially in, in a lot of the perversion that we see in the world, is trying to be justified as okay. And I know you've probably seen some of the things on the news about uh, some of the school boards and the things they want to push through with school, in the school board and stuff. Listen, those are natural things, but thank God in America we have a right to say no. We don't want that. No, we don't want that. How do you do that? Well, you vote for those people on the school board. Because listen, we got godly people in the schools. We got them. But we also have some danger in the schools. Everybody still with me? So let me get back to this, okay? So, so you try to create an image that you have identified with, and then you try to justify that in your life rather than saying, this is not what God said. This is not God's will. This is not God's plan. This is not God's purpose for my life. You can say that all you want and live in a perverse life or a, a wrong life or, well, God forgives me for my pornography or God forgives me for this or that. Listen to me today. Listen to me today. He may forgive you, but listen, you will reap the result of what you're doing. I mean, once in a while, listen, once in a while, everybody sins. Everybody makes mistakes. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about habit. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to read. This is a pretty good bit of scripture I'm going to show you. But it is a scenario that God wrote through Paul by inspiration of the Holy Spirit that really can help you understand this. In Romans chapter 1. Verse 21, listen to what it says. Well, I've, I've, let me, I've got to read verse 20. I'm sorry. Listen to this. Because it goes back to where the beginning, which is where we have to go back to. All right, so listen to this. Verse 20 of Romans chapter 1. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. 
Okay? Now listen to this next verse. You ready? Because although they knew God, here it is, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts. Okay? Their thought life, their imaginary life became weird, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Okay, you hear what I'm saying? This is what the Word of God says. This happens all the time in people's lives. I've seen it happen in people's lives. All right? So, so you got to hear this. And the word there really is vain imaginings. And their hearts get darkened. But here's verse 22. Listen to what it says. Listen to what verse 22 says. Professing to be wise, they become fools. What was the thing that the devil told Adam and Eve about taking that fruit? It's something to make you wise. See, the world is pro pro promoting being lenient, and I'm not, don't misunderstand me, I'm not talking about persecuting anybody, okay? But allowing all these other views, all of these other things into our lives. You can have it if you want it. I don't want it, okay? But as being wise because we're inclusive. Listen to me today. The church is not an inclusive place. Where do you draw the line? That's why we do background checks on Christians. Sorry, but we do. Everybody that goes in that nursery has anything to do with our children. The first thing they do is they go through a background check. We also make sure there's not anybody ever alone in there with those kids. Why? Not because we don't trust you, but because we don't trust you. We want, we want to make sure. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm about halfway through. <laughs> All right, listen. But you got to understand something. Identity, identity uh, profiles, we, we've got to pay attention to who we are. As believers, as born-again children of God, that's who we are. So they profess to be wise, but they become fools. Why? Are you ready for this? Listen. They changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. See, when you start worshiping something, identity, other than what God says you are, you change, y'all still here? You change the glory to corruptible instead of the incorruptible God. When I see who I am in Christ and I live my life according to who I am in Christ, let me give you one scripture. Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live by Faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay, that's identity. Okay, so you've got to understand and realize that, that, that it, there is a change that takes place. So listen to verse 24. Well, let me, listen, let me show you this first, okay? You change yourself and your glory from corruptible to incorruptible, okay? They change their glory. That's what happens when you identify with the wrong thing. You can talk, listen, I know I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again. You can try to be wise and talk about God and you say, well, I go to this church, I go to that church, but I wanna tell you something, listen to me. Unless you change who you are, you become a new creature in Christ and you pursue his identity and obey his word, all you're doing is trying to to, to grab his glory, and you never will be able to get it. 
you're still creating, even in church, you can create your own little world of glory. So people will feel good about you because you go to church. Just want to make sure there wasn't anybody behind me. All right. So listen to what it says in verse 24. And I'm going to deal with this, so hang with me. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. The moment you start identifying with something, it will be exposed by your lifestyle. Are y'all still here? Okay. Listen to verse 25. Who exchanged the truth of God for the lie. And you ready? Here it is. You worship and serve the creature rather than the creator. What's more important is my identity than it is God who says that's not right. That's not true. <clears throat> verse, verse 26. Now listen to this. For this reason, God gave them up. Now, I want you to listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying. And I'm going to tell you something. If you misquote me and I find out about it, I'm going to talk, talk to you about this. Listen to what I'm saying, okay? God will never give up on you if you're willing to change. He will allow you to go into the, what he says here, vile passions. If you want that glory, go for it. He'll give, he'll give it up. But he won't give up on you. But you've got to understand when it talks about he won't give up on you, that doesn't mean God won't. He will not give up on you. All you've got to do is Turn, repent at any time, and do God's will, and He'll flip, do back some flips for you. He'll do back flips for you. That's why He sent His Son, so that you could have His glory, but you can't have His and live a lifestyle that's contrary to what God says. Might be thinning out the crowd today, but I just got to tell you, you better hear what I'm saying because I'm going to listen. The world is not going to get any better. You better know what you identify with. And I'm not talking about, well, I, I identify with Life United. It's not about the church you identify with, it's the Christ Jesus that you identify with. Now, listen, listen to me. You think I'm speaking bad about people. I'm telling you about a spirit that's working. And that's what you've got to hear. That's what you've got to hear. God loves everybody in the fact that he wants everybody to repent and live for him and be born again and live his life. That will never change. But it says here, bottom line, it says, for this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. And then he, this is one that, that he uses here as an example. Or even their women exchange the natural use for what's against nature. Do I need to go into that? No. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust for one another. Do I need to go into that? Okay, I don't, do I? Men with men committing what is shameful, receiving in themselves Receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. <laughs> okay. And even, as, now here it is, listen. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to their debased mind. If this is what you want, Go for it. But you can't tell me that it's right, that it's righteous in any way, shape, or form because it's not. 
God, listen, I hear God love, you know, God doesn't love the sin, but he loves the sinner. That's true in the fact that he gave Jesus to die for him. But I want to tell you something. If you want to live that way, God will say, go for it. I know there's a song out that God says, wherever I am, you're going to pursue me. But that's not what the Bible says. Sure is quiet. I played golf with a guy the other day. And he said, I've watched you on TV. And I said, well, great. And he said, you know, I'll never forget something you said. And I thought it was going to be something scriptural, you know, some real powerful word that I gave. He said, I heard you say one time, it sure is quiet in this Presbyterian church. <laughs> That's all he got out of my message. <laughs> sure is quiet in here. So, so listen to this, because this is not just talking about identifying in this particular situation homosexuality, okay? Because if you go on, you can, you can hear that in what Paul said. It says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, which are not right, being filled with all unrighteousness, Sexual immorality, that goes in a lot of different ways. Amen. You know, it's, people think it's okay. Listen, I know you, and, and hey, I did it, so I'm, I understand. Sexual immorality, sleeping around, you think it's okay. It's not okay. Do that on Saturday night and come worship on Sunday. Listen, there's, that's not the right idea. You're making a, that's a mistake. Because you're going to start living for your own glory. It's going to, you're going to start letting that be more than... Okay. I'm not trying to point fingers at anybody. I'm just trying to get you to understand. Somewhere we've got we've to live the way God wants us to live, to identify the way God wants us to identify. And it, listen to me. If that separates you from your friends, so be it. If it separates you from certain things, so be it. Well, I don't have any problem being around that kind of stuff. Listen to me. If you're seeing it, if the image is there, it can be an imagination. If it can be an imagination, the next thing you know, you're identifying with it. Well, I don't see what's wrong with that. You start changing from the glory of God to the glory of man. Because God's pretty clear. It's not... It's not like there's any ambiguity in what the Lord says, not unless you want to falsify the Scriptures. So he goes on to say, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, too bad most of the kids aren't in here, huh? <laughs> Undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. Now listen, who know the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death. Here's the scary part, okay? And this is what I want to focus on for just a minute. Listen to this last portion of this scripture. Not only do the same, not only do they do the same, but they also approve of those who practice them. Let me tell you something that's very dangerous about the spirit that's working in America with all this identity stuff. Listen to me, okay? I wrote it this way, so let me just, let me, let me just say it this way, Okay? They also evangelize others. I was one of those evangelists before I got saved. I used to, if I found somebody that was trying to live right, I made it my point to get them screwed up. Why? Because that spirit was working in me. They didn't drink. Oh, come on. A drink's not going to hurt you. Have a couple. It's no big deal. I was an evangelist for the devil. That spirit is aggressive. 
well, they're just living in their world and, and, and it's not going to affect me. It's not going to affect my kids. Don't kid yourself. Don't, listen to me. Don't kid yourself. Even an image can go into an imagination that can go into an identity. Don't kid yourself. You better pay attention. Not only to your kids, but to what you see, what you are around, what you associate with, how you live your life. Well, it's going it's to really, it's going to really cut my social life. Good. You're living in the wrong glory. Now, listen to me. This is not just talking about sexual perversion, okay? So don't, that's not, it's not just that. I'm not trying to make a list, and you, you may have skipped by so far, but I think I read enough to find out, you know, kind of get you identified whether you were not where you need to be. But listen to this. 2 Corinthians 2 says this, verse 3. If our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light, you ready? Lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is what? The image of God should shine on them. When you tell people about Jesus, listen, I know you ought to tell them God loves them, Jesus died for them. But you also need to tell some people, and he delivered you. He delivered you. You don't have to live this way. Because that image of Christ is our identifier. It's what we identify with. It's how we identify our lives where we are in our lives. We can all do better. All of us can do better. But you've got to understand and realize that Satan is out there trying to blind people's minds. How's he doing it? By flooding the world and even our nation with this identity thing is one of the main things. Trying to get you to accept everything. Vain imaging leads to lust and natural desires. Listen to me. And it won't express the true image of God. You remember over in Acts where the children of Israel, um, I'm, I'm sorry, where, where the disciples, Peter and, and John, were called in for healing the, the lame man in chapter 3 and in verse, and then they brought him before the, uh, the Pharisees and they they told them, don't use that name anymore. And they said, well, we're going to do it whether you like it or not. And they preached to them. And they sent them back to, to the disciples. And they quoted a scripture from over in Psalm chapter 2. In verse 3, the Passion Translation says this about the world. It says, let's come together, break away from the Creator. Once and for all, let's cast off these controlling chains of God and His Christ. Controlling chains of God and His Christ. That's what the world is after. That's what the devil is after. So we, they can be unchained. But we're that, restrain, we're that restraining force. We're the ones that say, no, that's not right. That's not right. That's, and, and, and you have to be bold enough to say, that's not what God says. That's not what God says. Because there's, it's, it's, it's being aggressive. Jesus was the image of the invisible God. And listen to this. He has given us the right, the Word of God says in Romans 8, 29, listen to this. He's given us the right to be conformed to the image of His Son. That's where we identify. That's where the believer identifies with the image of the Son. That's how, that's how we live our lives. And it says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 10, I'm finished, but listen. 
put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. That's our identity. That's where we identify. That's what's right. That's what's upright. And we've got to understand that that's how we live our lives. Because this thing's coming down to the, um, this thing's coming down to the end, folks. And I want to tell you something. One of the things that happens in Revelation chapter 14 is there, the Antichrist, listen to this, and listen to this. It says that the beast will perform great signs so that he, that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and he deceives those who dwell on the earth by the, those signs which he were granted to him to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived, and he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast. Listen to me. Listen to me. What are you going to identify with? Because I'm hearing Christians today think things are okay that are not okay. Amen. I had a dear friend many years ago and, and a, a minister friend of mine. And, and I'll never forget, I can still see the setting. This happened oh, back in the, in the early 80s. And I, I remember him talking about seeing a movie, talking about how good it was. And I said, Man, that, that movie was X-rated. You went uh, R-rated. I said, that movie was R-rated. You went to a R-rated movie? He said, oh, that kind of stuff doesn't bother me. He said, I just, it just goes in one ear and out the other. That kind of stuff doesn't bother me. I just enjoy the movie. And I said, mm, uh, that didn't sit well with me. But I didn't, no, what, none of my business. That's, I can't tell him what to do. He was bigger than me and smarter than me and... But, but you know what happened? Same, the movie he was seeing had a lot of adultery in it. Guess what happened to him? He lived that image. He identified with that. Got into adultery. Listen to me, folks. We live in a, we live in a dangerous world. We better be living, identifying in Christ and who he is. And, and this is not some kind of moral lesson for you to choose whether you want to accept it or not. I'm telling you what the Word of God says. You want to, listen, you want the glory of God in your life or you want the glory of what you identify with outside of Christ in your life? You're the one that has to make that choice. God, God loves to forgive us. He wants to forgive us. The blood of Jesus is there to forgive us. But to think that you can just kind of choose and pick how you want to live, you're, you're messing with the glory of God. I don't want to mess with the glory of God. I want the glory of God. I want the presence of God in my life. And just because you say the words, I love God, doesn't mean a whole lot if you're not doing what you say. Everybody still here? It's there. The identity's there. With God, you walk with God. Without God, you start seeing evil, vain things. And it just gets worse. And it gets promoted more and more and more. So you've got to make a choice in your life. How are you going to identify? Remember what I said. God will forgive anyone. He will cleanse anyone. He will deliver anyone. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord. But to live in your own glory and to think God's going to still do everything for you, you are mistaken. That's not what the Word of God teaches. And I, I don't, that's not bad news, that's good news. That means, listen, you know what that means? That means the devil can never get a hold of what God has. Because as long as I stick with God, stick with the Word of God, stick with the Holy Spirit, the devil can't steal that. It's only when you get over there in his territory that all of a sudden you start getting a little hazy about the way you think and about things. 
And I just want to tell you, I'm through, but listen, I'm not apologizing for this message. And if you misunderstand, listen, if you, misun if you misunderstand it, it's your problem, not mine. I think I was as clear as I could be today. Not, I'm not pointing my finger at a person. I'm telling you about a spirit, and you better make sure you're identifying with Christ Jesus in all that you do and how you live your life. And if you do, you're going to get persecuted. Yay! Because the world doesn't want to hear it. They want to, tell, they want to be loud, but they don't want you to be loud. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, I pray that you seal this message in the hearts of the hearers today. And Lord, we, we all have areas of our lives that we're, we're growing in, that we're changing from that image that you said we could go from glory to glory. We want that in our lives. But Father, if there's an area of our lives where we're missing it, where we've allowed the enemy to come in and to to self-justify our lifestyle. Open our eyes to break that yoke that we might identify with one and only, the only person, Jesus, and what he did for us, that we can live our lives in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your working today. If you're here today and maybe you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, or maybe... This message has convicted you about your life and your lifestyle today. I want to just pray a prayer with you today, but as an act of your faith to say, hey, I need change. I want to pray for you. So lift your hand if that's you. Lift your hand and say, pray for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm looking around. Thank you. Anyone else? Father, right now, I thank you. For every person under the sound of my voice, as these have lifted their hands, Father, I pray right now that you work in their lives a supernatural work. They call on the name of Jesus to break every yoke, to break every bondage, to receive the life that you have for them. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen. Praise God.